Welcome to my final presentation for Dr. Lurcher's Library 266 class. Los Altos High School is a comprehensive public school situated in the heart of Silicon Valley. We serve communities that are notably different in terms of average socioeconomic status, ethnic and language diversity, and other important demographic factors. The school serves approximately 1,770 students and employs 158 certificated and classified staff. According to the latest report filed for the Western Accreditation of Schools and Colleges, the ethnic breakdown of students at Los Altos High School is 47% white, 27% Hispanic Latino, 21% Asian, and 5% other. Los Altos High School provides rigorous academics through an excellent college preparatory program. A wide range of honors and AP courses are taken by over a third of our students. There's also a strong set of support classes and programs for students who are not meeting proficiency standards. 96% of the students go on to study at either two or four year colleges and universities. The overarching aim of the Los Altos High School Library is to create lifelong learners who are ready to meet the informational challenges of the 21st century. To accomplish this, the library strives to develop information and tech literacy, support curriculum with materials and instruction, help students become competent, fluent, and engaged readers, create a safe haven for intellectual freedom, and provide a productive space to study, create, and get inspired. We not only want to help students find information, but use it to create original products that have both academic and personal value. This focus on content creation is symbolized by this mural which takes up the entire wall above our computer terminals. The purpose of the library has changed from a place to check out books to an instructional, collaborative work environment. As a result, more teachers bring classes to the library to conduct research, write, and collaborate, and more students use the library during non-instructional hours. The two biggest factors influencing our library collection for the upcoming school year are our school implementing a Bring Your Own Device or BYOD program, thus requiring more digital resources, and the implementation of the new Common Core Standards. The move from print to digital has been taking place over the last few years. Laptop checkouts are the majority of our circulation. And database usage is, is increasing for school projects. With the Common Core, these database collections are becoming even more important as students are increasingly required to do sustained research that's inquiry-based or problem-based and synthesizes multiple views uh, or sources on a subject. The change in the Common Core can be seen most readily in our English and Social Studies departments, which are requiring more nonfiction texts and inquiry-based assignments. In the 2013-14 school year, these libguides were viewed over 11,000 times, predominantly for English and Social Studies assignments. The emphasis on digital collections and Common Core is reflected in our budget for the 2014-2015 school year. Our library budget doubled this year with a grant we received from the Mountain View Los Altos Foundation of $10,000. As our school implements a new BYOD program, the foundation earmarked these funds specifically for digital resources such as databases and ebook collections. As most students conduct their research online, this makes sense and meets a very specific need. The library budget of $7,000 supports an additional database as well as our collection management system, Follett. We also subscribe to a print subscription service which curates and ships 18 of the best young adult fiction to our library every month. In addition to these monies, the library also receives $3,500 from the PTSA and from fees for missing or damaged books. This is the money that lets us handpick books and magazines that are necessary for our collection. Most of our collection is curated by external organizations. The digital collection uh, ebooks is uh, through a subscription for ProQuest eBrary. And our databases include JSTOR as well as a number of Gale Cengage learning databases. We provide patron access to other resources. Uh, through a partnership with both the Los Altos and the Mountain View Public Libraries, which allow our students to gain access to their uh, electronic resources. We also curate the best of the web uh, for school assignments on our LibGuides, 
as well as provide a number of uh, free reference sites uh, recommended by the ALA. Throughout the year, many students come into the library to work on research papers on controversial issues such as abortion, immigration, racism, drugs, and the environment. As a result, our social science collection is one of the most robust in the library. The bulk of the collection is made up of digital resources. Using a collection mapping technique, I broke down the social science collection into the areas students use most for research assignments in English and social studies, and then determined the number of print and digital resources we had in each area. To determine the quality of our collection, I looked at the average age of the print books in the social science section, again using Follett Destiny. The average age of the core collection was 2002, which I considered good but not great. Many of our books are a little dated and this can be a problem for students researching current event topics. I also considered the results of a student survey we conducted last year. When we asked 444 students, 25% of the student body, what nonfiction titles we should add to our collection, they wanted more books in the areas of psychology, sociology, and technology. By building our social science collection, I can look for issues related to these topics of student interest. In deciding how to improve our social science collection, I need to focus on purchasing quality texts. I like the definition the Brearley School Library gives for this, which is that materials acquired should enrich and support students' and faculty's research and recreational needs. Materials for students should be suitable in level of knowledge, maturity, and learning. How this is broken down in terms of book selection includes a number of factors, including the lasting value of the content, the enduring interest in the subject, the strength of our present holdings, the value commensurate to cost and need, the suitability of format to content, authority of the author, the high degree of potential user appeal, favorable reviews, quality and potential longevity of the format, and the holdings of nearby libraries. In making decisions about the quality content, I consult a number of resources, such as the School Library Journal, Follett Tidal Wave, Choice, user reviews from Amazon or New York Times book reviews. I also look at uh, award-winning titles to help me make the decisions on the, um, our social science collection. But I also need to consider um, the needs of students and teachers to build a collection that will be used by the entire school. I have to consider the national and state content standards, which require teachers to use more nonfiction and to encourage student examination and synthesis of multiple perspectives. I need to look at the major research assignments done last year and collaborate whenever possible with teachers. A study of the curriculum reveals that most classes ask students to select a controversial issue related to some aspect of social justice and make a persuasive argument. And last but not least, I need to get student input and consider their needs, interests, abilities, languages, socioeconomic background, and maturity. After gathering this input, I determined that titles found in the areas of social behavior and social problems were our most popular, and the average copyright date for each of these categories was 2002. For this reason, I decided to build these collections with more current topics and publications. As the Common Core asks students to explore controversial issues from multiple viewpoints, I will be looking for books that compile a variety of responses from respected authors. While the areas of economics and legal decisions are not as widely circulated, they are used frequently in research projects in economics and civics, required classes for every senior at my school. So I will maintain our collection in those areas and purchase titles that are more current. The Customs and Folklore section is our third largest in the Social Science section, but it is used the least. This is because the assignment that asks students to research another culture's myths and traditions is no longer taught. I plan to weed this selection. It also has the oldest average copyright date of 1993, so I'm sure many titles can be eliminated. Our, print, our collection acquisition process is flexible and allows for both methodical and responsive purchasing decisions. I can create a book order through a vendor invoice, then create the purchase order in about a day. The time it takes to get the principal signature, the district office signatures, uh, is about three to four weeks for the books to arrive. If I need something a little bit faster, I can create the book order, pay for it myself, submit a reimbursement form, and the vendor will ship the books in about two to three days. 
Uh, and then the time it takes for me to get reimbursed is about three to four weeks. This flexibility allows me to put the best material in the hands of students and teachers when they need it. Thank you.